So the review of acids and bases helps us a little bit understand um, the acidity of various uh, functional groups. So here I have um, two alcohols. I've got uh, cyclohexanol and I've got phenol. So I have a question for you. Um, which do you think is more acidic and why? If you said phenol, you would be correct. Um, I think there's something about those double bonds that make people gravitate towards that as a choice. And then the challenge is to explain why it is. So we're going to focus on that today. And just to remind you, remember that in general, when in organic chemistry, when we look at why, a, why an acid is more acidic than the other, usually what we do is we look at the conjugate base of the acid. And if it's more stable, that means that it's less reactive. That means that it's weaker. The weaker that the conjugate base is, or the more stable it is, the stronger its conjugate acid. And then, of course, the stronger the acid is, the lower its pKa. You know, this is multi-layer thinking here. So let's um, start first with conjugate base. How do we know if it's more stable or uh, less stable? So whenever you're asked the question, which is more acidic, a lot of times you need to draw the structure of the conjugate base and then examine it for stability. So here are the two ions for the conjugate bases. And you'll see that there is something special about the phenoxide ion, which is that there is resonance stabilization. So let's draw the resonance structures, starting with this one. I'll give you a few minutes. Go ahead and pause it and draw out the resonance structures. So before we go into the resonance structures, I just wanted to um, put in a little note that if you recall, uh, most um, carbonyl groups prefer to be in their keto forms, but uh, in the case of phenol, um, we have the keto form and then we have the enol form. And it turns out that uh, this is one situation where the enol form actually uh, wins out over the keto form. Um, that's because of aromaticity here. So the enol is favored over the keto. Is sort of something interesting about phenols. All right, so what we have here is with the resonance structures is we have um, these various resonance structures to show the delocalization of the charge um, throughout the ring. And so what that does is it spreads electron density and because uh, the negative charge um, electrons would repel each other, we want that charge to be spread over the molecule if possible. And so the aromatic ring allows us to do that. So if we uh, want to write that down, let's maybe make a note of that, that the less charge buildup there is. Um, or we can also say, conversely, more delocalization of the charge that will result in a lower potential energy or a more stable molecule. Remember, we're looking at the conjugate base. If the conjugate base is more stable, that means that there's um, a drive for the acid um, to give up its proton so that it could achieve stability. So um, that acid will do so. So the next part of the story is then to look at the substituents on a phenol and see what effect that might have on the acidity. So here's the phenoxide ion again. And if you can look at the resonance structures, you can see that these um, ortho positions and the para position here has um, more electron density via resonance. And I did a quick calculation uh, using Chem3D Pro, and I saw actually that um, the charge density is greater on those carbons. I'm going to switch over to that. And you can see that uh, I can use color, and where it's red here, that's where there's more electron density. And so you can see the ortho para positions. You can also see that with the molecular orbital description, 
where you see the electron density over the ortho para positions. So uh, you might wonder then, uh, what effect would having an um, electron donating group or an electron withdrawing group have on the stability of the ion? So if you think back to electrophilic aromatic substitution, you see that the negative charge buildup in these ortho para positions caused the benzene ring first to be activated, that is more nucleophilic for aromatic substitution, and that um, there was a directing effect, ortho para, because of that negative charge at these positions. Now let's see what happens to the stability of this molecule um, if we add um, electron withdrawing groups. So let's say that we have a phenol and we have um, this negative charge here. So this negative charge here is um, strongly basic. So this negative charge here is basic or reactive and anything we can do to sort of discharge that if we could um, spread out the charge better that would make that oxygen less reactive. So the effect that an electron withdrawing group has is it will pull the electron density uh, it'll spread it out um, over the ring by induction. So if I put an electron withdrawing group on here, it will spread out the charge. Does that make the molecule more or less stable? It should make it more stable, right? Spreads the charge by induction and then we'll make the molecule more stable. So if a conjugate base has become more stable as a result, then we would say that the acidic form with an electron withdrawing group has now become greater. So the next question is, in which positions of the ring do you think the electron withdrawing group would help the most in terms of making this molecule more acidic? If you said ortho para, then you'd be correct. Because we have more of the negative charge buildup on these positions, it would help the most if this phenol had electron withdrawing groups in those positions. Okay, but I just want to make a note here that even if it was meta, that would still help a lot. So it would help by induction, just not as much as if it were ortho para. So here's some pKa values to compare to see the effect of uh, this nitro group as an electron withdrawing group uh, versus phenol, which is monosubstituted. So we have simply the phenol, which is at pKa of 10. And then we have uh, the nitro group. If it is um, meta, that inductively withdraws electrons from the ring, thereby stabilizing the phenoxide ion. And so we'd expect the pKa to go down, so it's at 8.4. Now if we have ortho para, it should go down even more. And so what we have is for ortho, we have 7.22. And then for para, we have 7.15, so very similar. Then the next question is, how would this compare with an electron donating group? So here's the phenoxide ion again. Remember, it's negatively charged here. And so we've got this basic portion of the molecule there. And let's um, try to put an electron donating group on here. So what do you think that would do for that charge? Would it spread out the charge or would it increase the charge? If you remember, electron donating groups tend to push electron density into the ring. So that's why the ring becomes nucleophilic and it's very good for electrophilic aromatic substitution then. But for this case, we want the oxygen uh, anion to spread out its charge. So we want to pull that electron density into the ring, um, not push electron density onto the oxygen. So uh, for that reason, we'd expect that donating electrons into the ring has the opposite effect of what we desire. And thus, we would have a less stable conjugate base, be more reactive, 
it would be stronger and thus we would have a weaker acid. And a weaker acid would imply a higher pKa. So if we look at an electron donating group um, such as um, let's say a weakly donating um, an alkyl group like a methyl group then we'll see that um, the pKa of let's say here paramethylphenol here we would actually predict that to be higher than just phenol by itself and you would be right it's 10.26 so in general you'll see that the more electron withdrawing groups there are on the ring um, the more um, acidic that the phenol will be and then you can think about how um, other how that affects other functional groups also like take benzoic acid for example so here's a problem to practice we have which of the compounds in each of the following pairs is more acidic pause it and see if you can solve these before we go over them okay so for part A you see that the only difference really is this chlorine on the um, carboxylic acid and I think people would generally gravitate towards those halogens and they instinctively you want to circle that um, but then to explain why you might want to draw some structures uh, so that's really clear why that is and so remember that the more stable the conjugate base is the more acidic the acid form is so here's the conjugate base we have this electron density here around the carboxyl group and so the more that charge can spread out over the whole molecule the better so we have by induction this chlorine being very electronegative can pull that electron density away and so that's going to have a stabilizing effect on the on the conjugate base that means this will be stronger acid than if there weren't a chlorine. Okay, the next example shows a difference in the number of carbons, uh, carboxylic acid. We've got um, two carbons versus three carbons and then a nitro group. So if that's the only difference, then you might think, okay, well, the closer the group is to the acidic site, um, the more of an effect it will have. So in this case, I would say putting the nitro group closer to the carboxylic acid we have greater inductive effect. And then for part C we see that we have um, carboxylic acid versus um, an amino acid and think of this amino group as an electron um, withdrawing group because the nitrogen um, it's electronegative so it's pulling electrons towards itself in this case it's also positively charged it's protonated so it does that even more so that should be our choice then in part D we have carboxylic acid and then we have an electron donating group versus nothing and so uh, what we would expect is we want electron withdrawing groups to help stabilize the negative charge so in this case I would say it would be the benzoic acid rather than the paramethoxybenzoic acid.